Um, and you talked about getting into YouTube. Do you remember like the first time you got into YouTube? I mean, we're both old, so like YouTube didn't always exist. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't <laughs> part we of the normal. Up. Yeah, it wasn't part of the normal. What happened was there's a game called The Division that came out um, during Black Ops 3 year. I just didn't play that year because of the timing. <laughs> I was just like, I didn't game. But by the time I got back into it, one of my uh, my cousin, my brother, and my cousin's friend, they were all playing The Division. We were going to play The Division. We'd been waiting on The Division for like three years or whenever when it got teased. So then we jumped in on The Division and we were playing it. And then I ended up finding YouTube somehow around that time. I think maybe he recommended videos mm. and there was a guy by the name of skill up, which still has a YouTube channel now, nice. but his channel is like gameplay reviews. Like he just reviews game oh, nice. and he's from Australia, cool voice, whatever. But he was a data, a data driven type of channel. And then once that game kind of started fizzling out, I go, you know what? I always play COD. Let me get back into COD. I've never dropped the nuke. Even though I've had decent enough stats, I just never went on a 30 streak or whatever mm -hmm. in any of the Call of Duties, even though I played them all. So I said, ah, you know what? Let me get better at that. But now YouTube was part of the, the pool. So I was like, oh, you know what? Let me search up how to get a nuke. Boom. First video comes up, exclusive ace. And then I'm like, oh, cool. This guy's a data guy too. You know, so I was like, <laughs> yeah. and then I started, you know, going down the rabbit hole of like, oh, okay, all these tips on uh, the pro tips and this tip and that guide and this, this, and then you end up like really getting better instantaneously, essentially. You just absorb all that information. And I was like, damn, okay, I'm pretty smart. I can do this. And then probably within like six days or something, I already, I, then I dropped my first nuke and it was just like that, that quick. And then after that, it, it became much easier. And this was probably around April, May, June of 2017. And then I go, you know what? I could do this too. Like I can do a channel. I can provide a service to try and help people get better because it worked for me like mm -hmm. i'm like i know what worked and i could see it from both perspectives so my first channel is like breaking down like my own gameplay yeah which is like <laughs> a when you know it was one of those that dropped like a, a 37 kill streak on you know sky dock or something i'm not sky dock terminal it's like terminal mm -hmm. not not yeah it's terminal but in iw so it was one of those and uh and that's kind of where my channel started. And my mic sucked, my recording sucked. Like all that stuff sucks when you first start. Sure, my thumbnail is yeah. trash, you know. But I was really like a learner at the time. And this is, um, I was still had school, but it's like I had my son, and it's like I still had a little free time. Right. So like I would wake up and I'd search, okay, how to make YouTube thumbnails, how to edit <laughs> yeah. videos, what's the best mic for you know recording, da da da. And then I go down that rabbit hole. And I pretty much just continue to evolve from that portion. And it kind of just worked out that way. And I've kind of evolved into my own lane. And then luckily, um, like I said, Warzone popped off and, and it worked out that I didn't have a lot of competition within that same niche or else, you know, it may have not been the same growth. It still would have been huge because everyone popped off from Warzone, but not the same. Yeah. Were you seeing uh, first a step back? You know, I, I don't I hope everyone realized I think people who are watching this obviously realize, but like me playing call of duty through college sitting on my couch with my buddies you know, on a giant big screen tv you know your kd is i think my kd was i don't know probably like right around 1.75 probably mm -hmm. um then you start consuming content you're like oh wait i could actually get better at this and your kd goes up pretty fast i think if i went from like a, a 0.75 to like a 3.1 in that first like iteration of warzone like towards that period and so consuming content definitely helps did you see growth in your first like videos at all before it kind of blew up into Warzone? So it was kind of like a steady, uh, like small growth, but it was consistent. So in the beginning, uh, it was IW. So I had uploaded a few videos. I didn't expect to grow mm -hmm. initially. I, I just like, oh, like the plan is to upload in World War II, the new game that's coming out, um, but I need reps. So I would upload, I was almost spam uploading uh, and getting the hang of it and trying and initially I only did like three uploads a week and then five and then it was seven and it was like every <laughs> single day and it almost became like obsessive to do something uh, in a way because it's like oh cool I like this you know I can learn this aspect I can learn this aspect I'm trying I'm evolving in these aspects so you continually to grow same way you would improve in COD it, you know you can have those aspirations or a sport or whatever you kind of get that drive every morning you're trying to get better and uh, initially, 
that that uh, wasn't great because the game was already at the end of the life cycle. It wasn't a very popular COD. I even uploaded uh, Destiny came out, Destiny 2. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to grind some of this. And then I'm just going to get the reps. Not necessarily the content, but the reps on how to make videos. So I made probably about 8 to 10 videos of Destiny 2 before World War II came out. I even did a couple reviews that are still on my channel for uh, South Park, the, the, the game that came out, <laughs> yeah. Assassin's Creed, uh, Odyssey, or, or Origins, or whatever the heck came out at that time. They all came out around the same time. Yeah. And then, um, and then I started World War II videos, and uh, I just started posting. And I did what a lot of people did. I did loadouts, whatever, because that's kind of like uh, the trap a lot of people just get sucked into. It's just organic mm -hmm. because that's what gets the most views but i would usually do the the a little bit of a twist where most people they would do live com where they would just play and if they talked they talked if they didn't they didn't and then they would just edit it make it look like a cool gameplay oh well, i would still get the gameplay but with no voice and then i would do a complete voiceover in the editing software Mm. editing talking over the same gameplay so i'd be like hey look at here i'm looking at the mini map you can see the spawns flipped and i was more doing educational because that's what i wanted to do but if i titled how to get better at domination those videos don't get any views mm. so i was kind of like clickbaiting in a way yeah. i still gave the class setup for the weapon <laughs> but the video was really about how to get better and how to play better and how to improve which like you know i, I enjoy that style of content because I think it could be beneficial and I think there's actually a rewarding aspect to it instead of I'm good at the game, enjoy my gameplay. I, I, I do see there's a value in that for people, but yeah. it's not the same value I would enjoy. I don't watch that content. Sure. And so in terms of like your editing and everything that you do, it sounds like it's just all self-taught. Yeah, pretty much everything I've done, I've pretty much self-taught. Uh, YouTube is a valuable resource. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, pretty much if you want to look something up, like, well, how do I do split screen? How do I do this? How do I make a, a widget? How do I, like, you could literally look up everything and there's some random video with terrible audio out there that has a perfect tutorial, very succinct and, and tells you exactly what you want to do. And then through trial and error, you, you learn it for yourself. And then if it's something you actually want to incorporate in, you incorporate it and, and it just is that easy. So you're making YouTube videos, you're getting all your reps in and Warzone comes out. Is it just immediate explosion for you or what is that growth like? So it, it wasn't, um, not, not really. Uh, because we already still had pretty good pacing when modern warfare 2019 came out. I had already had a hundred thousand subs. Okay. And then each, each month I was gaining probably like 15 to 20,000 subs. So by the time Warzone came out, I was close to like 150, 200,000 subs. And it was, it was cooking, but it didn't like cook more all of a sudden cause Warzone dropped. Um, and it was just kind of a steady growth throughout the year and nothing felt like an explosion until year two. That's where everything went went absolutely insane. Uh, Cold War integration offered a unique problem where none of the weapons and attachments literally did anything they said and didn't match the base game. So it was a huge problem mm -hmm. that essentially only one or two people other than myself in the community actually cared about trying to even solve. Sure. And it was basically me, exclusive A, uh, not exclusive Ace. Exclusive Ace was more for multiplayer, so he didn't care about Warzone at that point, which again is a, is a, was a pro for me. Thank you, exclusive Ace, for not liking <laughs> What's up, Warzone. Guys? My I name guess. Is Ace? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the other one is uh, True Game Data, which also around this time he is getting his website started up. I had already done, I believe, a shout out at this point for his website, um, and he was already getting some traction. But since I already had the following. Obviously, that you know, you got more subs. You're generally going to get more views, especially relative to to somebody else, even mm -hmm. if they're making good content. So, everyone wanted answers, and even if you hated me, I was the guy that had the answers essentially at that time. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of like a it was kind of like a double edged sword where everyone had to watch that content or or hear about that content. And it would be like, I would go to streams and I would stop chatting because then people would be just spamming me instead of <laughs> paying attention to the streamer. And I'm like, bro, I, I want to hang out and watch the streamer too. But uh, it, it was kind of an interesting part. And there was like a lot of those catalysts that were happening where the game people would spam. Hey, J-God said this. J-God said this. J-God said this. And it was like, well, yeah, I did say that. And then they have to watch the, like the clip or whatever the case is. And that dominoed into... A couple different catalysts where uh, 
the first I would say notable person that probably uh like vouched, I guess, for me or or pointed out to something related to Twitter is Teep. Uh one of the people in his chat, this is around the DMR meta, before like I had really a big surge, and they go, Oh, um, well, J God said this barrel's better because it has better bullet velocity, whatever. It was not accurate to what it said, but yeah. since I had tested every barrel on every gun, on every distance, whatever, I had the data and then I could prove it side by side. And then he was, he checked it out and he goes, well, you know what? He's right. And then <laughs> I got a follow on Twitter. And then a lot of times with your circle, people are like, oh, T follows that guy. Okay. He must be somebody that I know or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then boom. And then it was just kind of one of those domino effects. And then, you know, Nick Merckx, you know, and Tim, the tap man. And it was like, big big names around that time where it was like oh yeah j god said boom done yeah or or the streamer would turn it back on them and they'd be like well what j god say and then the chat <laughs> yeah. would be like oh yeah he said this so it was kind of an interesting time i think it was uh very unique with covid and all that stuff but my biggest month was around that march uh of 2021 um, March, April, where I gained about 150,000 subs in a month. And I had 19 million long form views before short form was like a thing that we did. Yeah. So it was like a huge, a huge, huge series of months there where everything was just ridiculous. You couldn't do any wrong. Like yeah. literally you could post anything you, and it was, <laughs> it was popping. I remember it was so crazy that Iron, like literally, if anyone wrote a question in Iron's chat, he had a thing set up to automatically just say, because Jay God said so. Like literally. For oh yeah, I think Shaded got the same thing too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do the different COD cycles affect your work schedule? Uh, I assume it has some sort of effect, but you know, every year is a different COD cycle. What does your work schedule kind of go around those? So before Warzone, it was pretty straightforward um, where you kind of have the hype the game would stabilize, it would die a little bit, it would come back up, and then it would die again, and then new game again. It would just be that cycle. With Warzone, it's kind of overlapped it a little bit, where I think the deader portion of Warzone is deader for a, like a, a stronger stretch, but when it's good, it, it's it's because it's free to play, the, the that, that part stretches much further as long as the game's good. Uh, I tweeted a couple days ago about the, like, you know, the spike MW2 had with Warzone 2, and that was huge. And then the drastic fall off, um, that, that was a problem of the yeah, game. Right. But normally how it works is usually around this time, I'm chilling, enjoying the beta. I don't need to go crazy. Uh, probably within the next month or so, I'll make my list of all the videos I plan to make at the start. Uh, even maybe doing some base scripting on certain things. I go look at older videos, what did well, what didn't. Look at the actual retention charts. Where did people click away? What could I change in this one in a settings video or whatever video? Uh, somebody else got like a million views on this video and they only have like 30,000 subs. What the heck were they doing? Let me go check that out relative to their sub count. Uh, and then as soon as the game comes out, then it's just like full on grind mode where you might grind eight to 12 hours of actual gaming. And then you're doing like three to four hours of videos. Then you sleep and do it again, usually for a few weeks. And then by the time Warzone, now we get like a second spike because now it's a Warzone spike. And then we already kind of have all the analytics. We find out, you know, data, like there's a series of stuff we do. And then basically we're good on content and probably until the mid season update or so, which is like the beginning of January. And then, mm -hmm. then we go update base, like, oh, cool. We'll cover the update. We'll cover what the current metas are. Uh, let's cover some other new tips. Oh, this particular attachment. We try to maybe talk about some evergreen content where it's just like the state of COD. Hey, you know what? Here's COD life cycle or whatever, whatever. There, there's lots of things that uh, you kind of cover through, but that's general cycle. And then right around the summer again, once the new game starts hyping, then, you know, it kind of winds down and you don't really lose much by not posting as much because the views are lower anyways. Thanks for watching this clip from Mimosa Brunch. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and check out the full interview right here. Right here, guys. Right here.